Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the last lecture, we have seen some examples of non-zero sum games, both finite as well as continuous games. Now, we will formally define the non-zero sum game and the Nash equilibrium. So, let us uh, start defining the non-zero sum games. So, here there are two players. So, they have their strategy spaces S1 and S2 and the pair of functions, the player 1's pair of functions is given by pi 1 which is a function from S1 cross S2 to or similarly player 2 has a pair of function which is pi 2 from S1 cross S2 to R. Now, the players are choosing their decisions in S1 which maximizes their payoff functions. Like in zero sum games, the payoff of player 1 also depends on choice of player 2. So, therefore, the issue comes. So, here what is the definition of a Nash equilibrium? So, Nash equilibrium is a pair of strategies let us say x star y star they belongs to S1 cross S2 such that when player 2 has fixed that y star x star should maximize player 1's pay off. This should happen for all x in S1. Similarly, when player 1 fixes x star, y star should maximize player 2's payoff. So, these are the two conditions that defines a Nash equilibrium. In fact, if you look back the examples, this is exactly what we have used it. When one of the player fixes his strategy, the, the other player whatever he chooses should maximize it. So, in a sense what you are really saying here is that when a player let us say player 2 fixes y star for player 1 deviating from x star is not profitable. And similarly, if player 1 fixes at x star player 1 deviating from y star is not profitable to him. So, this unilateral deviations are not profitable to the players. So, this defines the notion of Nash equilibrium. This is introduced by John Nash and this has become a major tool in economics and many many other fields. Okay. Once we define this Nash equilibrium, now the whole question that comes here is that does there exist a Nash equilibrium? And even before Nash equilibrium, how is this different from saddle point equilibrium, a zero sum game? Now, let us look at a zero sum game. In a zero sum game, player 1 maximizes pi x y, player 2 minimizes the same. In other words, what we have is that pi 1 of x y is nothing but pi x y for pi 2 it is simply minus of pi x y. So, any zero sum game is in that sense is a non zero sum game with a special property that the sum of the two payoffs is 0. So, now if I write down the definition of an Nash equilibrium what we will get here is that pi 1 x y star is less than or equal to pi 1 x star y star. This is nothing but pi x y star less than or equal to pi x star y star. This is the first inequality that we have in the definition of saddle point equilibrium. Now, look at this particular thing. If I look at that, 
what it says is that pi 2 x y now pi 2 x star y is nothing but minus pi of x star y this is less than or equals to minus pi of x star y star this is nothing but pi x star y star less than or equals to pi x star y this is true for every y in s2 so if i combine this inequality and then the previous inequality what we have is exactly the definition of a saddle point equilibrium so nash equilibrium automatically encompasses the definition of saddle point equilibrium okay so once we know that the saddle point equilibrium is exact is a is exactly same as nash equilibrium for zero sum games so now we will start seeing given a game whether a saddle point equilibrium exists or not not saddle point nash equilibrium now like in zero sum games we do know that we need some conditions to ensure the existence of a saddle point equilibrium the likewise because non zero sum games includes zero sum games they do require some additional conditions what are those additional conditions we will look at them so let us see so we take the non zero sum game now so the pair of functions s1 s2 are the strategies of player 1 so we assume s1 is compact and convex same with s2 compact and convex subsets of euclidean space the pair of functions pi1 x comma y this is a function from s1 cross s2 to r and similarly pi2 this is a function from s1 cross s2 to r both have to be continuous okay in the zero sum games in the x variable we assumed them that to be concave in y variable we assumed convex now here look at the pi1 is required only by player 1 this is only for player 1 it does not matter how it behaves with respect to y so what we really want is that pi 1 as a function of x should be concave for each fixed y similarly pi 2 as a function for second player should be again concave for each fixed x in s s x is in s1 y is in s2 okay pi 1 should be concave in x variable pi 2 should be concave in y variable so these are the assumptions that we require so these are all the assumptions now we will prove our main theorem existence under the above assumptions there exist a Nash equilibrium. So let us prove this. So like in uh, zero sum games we have to use the fixed point theorem of course in zero sum games we did not use fixed point theorem we have used the convexity properties but in a non zero sum games we are forced to use the fixed point theorem the fixed point theorem that we are going to use is known as brower fixed point theorem which we have discussed already in the combinatorial games in fact we have used the game of hex to prove the brower fixed point theorem in two dimensions but we assume that result for n dimensions we won't go into proving the n dimensional theorem in fact the hex can be extended to give a proof in n dimensions as well. So let me recall Brouwer fixed point theorem
let k be compact and convex subset of some Euclidean space. And f from k into k is a continuous function. Then there exists x in k such that f x is exactly x. So, such a point x is known as a fixed point theorem, fixed point and Brouwer fixed point theorem is a very very important result. And of course, this Brouwer fixed point theorem assumes that the k to be a compact and convex subset of some Euclidean space. It is a finite dimensional result. In an infinite dimensions analogous results do exist, we let us not worry about them. So, now let us go to the proof. Now let us look at the payoff functions. So, fix x bar in S1, y bar in S2. Now consider y1 x comma y x comma y bar plus mod x minus x bar. I can put a square here. Okay. So, now this is a continuous function. So, look at this function and look I would like to look at the r max over x in S1. Okay. Pi 1 x comma y bar plus mod x minus x bar square I'm, as a function of x I already know that pi 1 is a concave function in x and mod x minus x bar square. Okay. Here is a small error here it has to be minus to make it concave this is also a concave function, this is also a concave function minus x minus x bar is a concave. So, therefore, this is a concave function and in fact, this particular term forces strict concavity. We have already discussed about the strict concavity conca convexity. So, therefore, this function as a function of x the maximum exists and the maximizer is unique. Okay. Therefore, there exist unique x prime in S1 such that pi 1 x prime comma y bar minus mod x prime minus x bar square is nothing but maximum x in S1 pi 1 x y bar minus mod x minus x bar square. There exists a unique x prime. The uniqueness comes from the strict concavity and this is a convex function concave function and hence the maximizer do exist. So, everything is fine. So, for a fixed I have fixed already x bar and y bar I have picked this x prime. The next I will similarly I look at this pi 2 x bar phi minus y minus y bar square. And I look at maximizing over y in S2 of this. Once again in y the function pi 2 is a concave and mod y minus y bar is convex and minus of it is concave. So, therefore, this is a concave function and minus mod y minus y bar square makes it strict. Therefore, this is a strict concave function therefore, there exist unique y prime in S2 such that pi 2 x bar y prime minus mod y prime minus y bar square is nothing but max y in S2 of this quantity whatever is written there. And 
Now we have a function now x bar y bar going to x prime y prime. Look at this let me denote this by a function phi. So, therefore, phi is a function from S1 cross S2 to S1 cross S2. We have a function from S1 cross S2 into S1 cross S2 defined by x bar y bar going to x prime y prime. What are x prime y prime? x prime is defined as the unique minimizer of this strict concave function and y prime is defined as the unique minimizer of this strict concave function and this maximizers this for if I as I change x bar and y bar they move continuously. So, in fact this is a, an exercise from analysis real analysis which says that phi is a phi is a continuous function. Okay. Once we know that the phi is a continuous function, what is going to happen? Because S1 and S2 are convex and compact, therefore S1 cross S2 is also a convex and compact set. Therefore, and they are all unit finite dimensional spaces, the Brouwer fixed point theorem tells you that there exists a fixed point. Brouwer implies there exists x star comma y star such that phi of x star y star is nothing but x star y star. Okay. Now, let us rewrite what exactly it is says. Recall the this if I x bar is x star y bar is y star then x prime is also x star y prime is also x star. So, I have to use that here in this thing. So, let us write that. So, pi x star y star minus mod x pi 1 x star minus x star square. So, the when I put x bar is and y bar is x star and y star. So, this is y star this is y star this is x star and then x star should maximize it that means pi 1 x star y star minus x star minus x star square should be same as maximum of that. This should be same as maximum x in S1 of pi 1 x comma y star minus x minus x star square. So, x star and y star satisfies the following thing pi 1 x star y star is nothing but max x in S 1 of pi 1 x comma y star minus mod x minus x star square. Similarly, pi 2 x star y star is nothing but max y in S2 of pi 2 of x star y minus mod y minus y star square. Now, the interesting thing that I would like to point out here is that since x star is maximizing this quantity let us assume everything is nice that means the pi 1 is a smooth function if we take it phi 1 is a continuously differentiable function if we take it what is going to happen intuitively is that the derivative of pi 1 at x star y star in the variable x star minus the derivative of uh, x minus x star square that is going to be 2 into x minus x star, but at x star that is going to be 0. Therefore, this is going to be 0. 
this immediately tells you that when you fix y star pi 1 also has a maximizer at x star because pi 1 is a concave function in x star the first order condition is also sufficient. But this is all assuming several conditions for example x star has to be an interior point and other kind of issues. But this is an intuition. So, the essence of this intuition is that x star not only maximizes this pi 1 x y star minus mod x minus x star square it also maximizes pi 1 x y star. So, how do we prove this fact? So, let us prove this. So, goal is to prove x star maximizes pi 1 x y star. So, how do we prove it? So, let us take some point x from S 1 and also take a number lambda in this open interval 0 1 and look at lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x star. So, this is a convex combination of x and x star and both x and x star here are in S 1 therefore, this belongs to S 1. Now, x star is by the definition of x star, x star maximizes this entire quantity. So, we use that now to say that pi 1 lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x star comma y star minus mod lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x star square this is less than or equals to pi 1 of x star y star minus of course mod x star minus x star square that is going to be 0. This is 0. So, this is what we have it. Now, this particular term we know that this function pi 1 is convex in the in this variable. And similarly, let us look at what this particular term is going to be. If we look at it this term that is nothing but lambda x plus x star minus lambda x star. So, there is a missing term here. minus x star square that is a missing term there. So, using that what we have is that lambda x plus x star minus lambda x star minus x star if you use all that what we are going to get here is plus x star minus x star gets cancelled what you have is lambda square mod x minus x star square. Now, in the first term here we use the concavity and to say that lambda pi 1 x comma y star plus 1 minus lambda pi 1 x star y star this is less than equals to pi 1 lambda x plus 1 minus lambda x star y star the concavity used. So, therefore, using that concavity and this term this entire inequality can be rewritten as follows. Therefore, this lambda pi 1 x y star plus 1 minus lambda pi 1 x star y star that is smaller than this one and then the minus of that that is minus lambda square mod x minus x star square this is less than or equals to pi 1 x star y star. So, now once this 
equation is there. So, there is a pi 1 x star y star, there is again pi 1 x star with 1 here. So, these two get cancelled. So, if we re remove that particular thing what we have is lambda pi 1 x y star minus lambda square mod x minus x star square which is less than or equal to this minus lambda pi 1 x star y star comes to the right hand side that becomes pi 1 x star y star. Now if we look at it in all the terms there is a lambda factor so divide by lambda to get pi 1 x y star minus lambda mod x minus x star square this is less than or equals to pi 1 x star y star. Now lambda in open 0 1 this is arbitrary therefore let lambda decrease to 0 lambda go to 0 this immediately gives us that pi 1 x y star less than or equals to pi 1 x star y star and now again x in S1 is arbitrary. So, because x is an arbitrary this immediately tells you that x star maximizes pi 1 x y star. Therefore, x star is now maximizing pi 1 x y stars. Therefore, what we have is pi 1 x star y star is greater than or equal to pi 1 x y star for all x in S1. A similar procedure with pi 2 similar procedure with pi 2 we will actually get pi 2 x star y star is bigger than or equals to pi 2 x star y this will happen for any y in S2. This is exactly the definition of Nash equilibrium this implies x star y star is Nash equilibrium. this proves the existence of Nash equilibrium of this game where the payoffs are given by pi 1, pi 2 and pi 1 is concave in x, pi 2 is concave in y and of course we have to assume that they are jointly continuous. Okay. Now I would like to point out a, the most common method that uh, people use here is using what is known as best responses. So, I will let me introduce that so we have this game with strategy sets S1, S2, pi1, pi2 are the payoff functions is a non-zero sum game that we have. The best response of player 1 when player 2 fixes y is nothing but set of all x in S1 such that pi 1 x y is nothing but max x prime in S1 pi 1 x prime y. Similarly, the best response of second player when player 1 fixes x is all y in S2 such that pi 2 x y is max y prime in S2 of pi 2 x y prime. Now because of the concavity assumption all this these best response sets are convex both b r 1 y and b r 2 x are concave are convex 
under the assumptions pi 1 is concave in x pi 2 is concave in y ok. Therefore, this defines a map let me put it this thing x comma y going to b r 1 of y cross b r 2 of x. So, what kind of map any point x comma y pair of points take are taken to a sets here these are subsets of s 1 cross s 2. So, these are the multi valued maps. So, here the common approach that people follow here is to show that this particular map satisfies certain assumptions of a theorem called Kakutani fixed point theorem. Okay. We need this certain continuity properties of the set valued map which I will not go through. So, but our proof has an advantage that we do not need to worry about a set valued map this is just simply a normal continuous functions and Brouwer fixed point theorem is sufficient. In fact, the same ideas can be extended to an infinite dimensional spaces where the Brouwer fixed point theorem has to be replaced with appropriate fixed point theorem infinite dimensions here what helps us is shorter fixed point theorem which we will not go into the details. So, we will only stop here. Uh, the next thing we would like to ask is what happens with bimatrix games. Now, in the zero sum games we have seen that the matrix games you can actually prove the min max theorem the von Neumann min max theorem using nice convexity ideas. Can we really prove something like that here? The proof using just fair convexity ideas is not that easy, but we will prove a proof we will provide a proof which is due to Nash in the next session where we also discuss some other properties of this Nash equilibrium. With this we stop this session we will continue in the next session. Thank you.